I am your host, Fat Dag. You're listening to Wise Advice. Now, my weight loss journey failed when I focused on how. It wasn't until I switched my focus to why that I truly transformed myself. Join the show on the web at fatdag.com and follow along on Twitter and Instagram at Wise Advice. Send in your comments, your questions, and your celebrations, and I'll include them as part of the show. Before we dive in, remember, when you're out of points, stop eating points. I'm honored to be your wingman as we walk through this journey together, because I believe in you. Well, here we are, episode 55 of Wise Advice, and uh, I got a lot today. The inbox is really just kind of and it's it's stacking up, and I think it's a great thing because then I can dig through and I can kind of lump some things together so that the show kind of has a theme. So the more the more you send in, the more it gives me that opportunity to do that. So I'm I'm gonna kind of kind of roll through that, and I'm really fortunate. Uh, we're coming up on the summer break, uh, so I'm gonna get a little help with the show during the course of the summer. Is is uh, I get some free time. From uh, from my lovely wife, she's she's a school teacher, so she's off for the summer, so she'll help me curate some of the content and uh, make sure we get it on onto the show. So, uh, so here I here we go on to uh, the first of many. Liz writes in at a Glendora, California. She says I'm down ten percent. I'm five two, and at my heaviest, top, tipped the scales at two forty seven in August of two thousand fourteen. I lost 20 pounds on my own when I joined Weight Watchers 711 2016. I started at 227 pounds. Today I'm down to 196. I feel great at 51. I still have at least 30 more to go. I have had days where I feel this just isn't possible, but I just keep moving. This is not my first time being on Weight Watchers. Actually, I, I've lost count of how many times I've started and quit. Not this time. I am in it for the long haul. Thank you for all you do. I will listen to all of your podcast. Um, Liz, I've had days like that, right? I think um, I think we've all had days like that where where we just uh, you know we just think that it's just not possible. So one of the coolest things about the Connect community is that uh, if you spend any time in there, you quickly learn that that it actually is possible. And so that's what it takes. Sometimes it takes you seeing. The possibility, and then what it takes is that you just you just gotta commit to yourself. You have to stay focused to yourself, and and you gotta say, you know, I I'm just gonna I'm just gonna see what happens. I'm gonna keep doing this regardless of what the results look like. I'm just gonna stay stay connected to the mindset. I'm gonna stay focused on what happens, and, and at that point, you still don't believe it's possible. But what you can do is, is you kind of, with that term we use a lot, is you fake it till you make it. But, in, but it's not that you're faking it, it's that you're developing these habits slowly. So as you develop these slow habits, eventually that turns into your new lifestyle. Then the belief in yourself starts taking over. Because what's going to happen is you're going to recognize some of these habits that kick in that, that aren't normal to what you're used to doing. And when you start recognizing that change, that's when you start to believe in yourself. So, so early on, it's difficult to believe in yourself. I get it. That's exactly where I was when I started. I, I didn't believe in myself, but, but the community believed in me. The community showed me that it was possible. Then I started believing. So great job. Um, you know, we've all had bad days, but the beautiful thing about a bad day is, is you have the ability to follow it up with a good day. You have the ability when you wake up to say today is going to be a great day, and you can do that. So thank you very much. Heather writes in. Heather says, uh, also reach 10%. Uh, I've been attending meetings since the 1st of January. Even though I still have 50 pounds to lose to get a healthy BMI, I can already feel a great improvement. I have a terrific leader and a group of members that I meet with every week. I love the podcast because I need the continual verbal support. A great big thank you to all of the Connect community. Well, Heather, uh, th- this is exactly why my commitment to you is that I want to do this as a daily show. Uh, I believe, you know, if you listen to the episode yesterday, 54, you will understand how instrumental a daily reminder was in my journey. And, I, and I'm carrying that message forward from, from, you know, that lesson learned 
into this podcast, and I understand that we just need every day. So I do want to get this show on the air every day so that you have something every day to listen to. The good news is, is the days that I don't have it, you have the ability to get to all the episodes, uh, all the episodes, and you can roll through and, and kind of get some replay in so you always have something to listen to. So that's there. Congrats on your 10%. 10% does not happen by accident. It takes complete focus. It takes complete dedication. You have to be mindful to the process and you've done it. When you hit your 10%, we don't give you a new program. When you hit your 10%, we say you've proven you can do it. You've proven you have the tools to do it. You've proven through, through many months of hard work, focus, and dedication that you've done it. You now have the ability to reach your goal. It's just a matter of time. So, so go after it. Stay focused, stay mindful, and you can do it. Uh, I'm so proud of you. Great, great, great job. Next up, Leah writes in. Leah's out of Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, and simply says, I love your podcast. I listen while I'm driving home from work just after my daily, daily Bible reading. Got to have my priorities straight. Thanks for all you do. Leah, hey, I'm, I'm honored to be number two on your list. That's, uh, that's quite the honor. Uh, thank you for, for prioritizing it properly. Uh, really is, uh, really is encouraging, uh, to know that, you know, I'm the same way now. And, and podcasts for me have taken over my spot on my radio dial, uh, because I've realized that anything I want to do in life, it takes focus. So what I have to do, is I have to stay, stay mindful to the process and, and, you know, just the generic radio chatter doesn't allow me that ability to do that. The generic radio chatter just, it just kind of fills the air. And I'm like, that's time that I can use to work on something that I want to get done. So thank you for plugging me in. Thank you for getting me connected in there. And, uh, you know, and let's keep going. Out of Berkeley, California, Marsha writes in and says, hi, Mike. Again, absolutely love the podcast. Thank you. I just listened to episode number 46, and I'm intrigued by your conundrum of what is an appropriate goal weight as you gain muscle. I hope to have that problem someday. One idea that stuck with me is that maybe judging on how your face looks could be a guide, and as you add strength training to your fitness reg uh, regime. Cheers, and thanks for the motivation. Yeah, Marsha, that's, that's absolutely it. And so that, that only can happen with, um, you know, a lot of selfies, right? And, and I'm, I definitely have no issues taking selfies anymore. Uh, and so you got to compare them back and forth. But, um, you know, I, I really, I'm going with, in my stage now, I'm going really with a, a look and feel rather than a number. Uh, I have the fortunate ability. I'm, I'm very fortunate that working as a Weight Watcher leader, uh, you know, I don't have, uh, that same, I mean, I weigh in monthly. I, I do, I do check my weight monthly, but it's not a matter of whether I pay or not pay. Um, you know, I'm down 91 pounds from, from my highest weight. So, uh, you know, I'm clearly within the guidelines of maintaining the leader. Um, so as my weight creeps up because I'm adding muscle, you know, if I was a member at this point, I would probably at this point, I would be heading to a doctor, uh, just to get an assessment with my, my 18% body fat and say, listen, I'm not, I'm not trying to lose any more weight. So I may be two or three pounds over my Weight Watcher goal for a max, but clearly I'm healthier now than I've ever been. So at that point, I would probably in, interject into that, into that room, which is, I think is a, that's exactly why we have that as an option. Uh, for me, I had to get to my goal weight first. Uh, I had to get to a healthy BMI first. And then to know that I did, and then now as I add muscle, I can feel the difference. So that's where I'm at in the mindset. Um, you know, it, it's a look and a feel, and it's not about the number. So keep up the great work. Um, you're, you're doing fantastic work. Uh, you know, um, really honored to be walking this journey with you. So, so thanks. Next up is uh, Melissa. Melissa says, hi, Mike. I've been listening to your podcast from the beginning and really enjoy your advice. I like, I like how you focus on setting attendance goals. This is my first time on Weight Watchers, and I've lost over 25 pounds since last August, and I'm within a couple pounds from my goal, which is the top of my range. So I've seen this question come up from lifetime people on Connect, but I haven't seen it, anyone answer the question. And looking at other lifetime members that have posted their goal weight and current weight, I've seen big gaps between these numbers. Also on your last podcast, number 46, you talked about how your scale accountability 
and your range before your accountability emails go out to your team members. For Weight Watchers, I know to become lifetime, I need to be in my range for my height or to have a doctor's note. In maintenance, you need to be within plus or two of your two pounds range of your goal. My question is, after you've reached your lifetime, do you strive to have a big gap between goal weight and current weight that that way you can uh, maintain? So with setting my goal weight high, I would still like to lose about five more pounds after getting to lifetime to have a gap, which I could sustain without worrying about uh, being right on my goal. What are your thoughts regarding gaps between goal weight and current weight? Thank you for your service to our country. In the in the last couple of years, uh, I've ridden my motorcycle in the Patriot Ride to honor our service people here in Minnesota. Kind regards, Melissa. Melissa, first off, uh, thanks for for the for the ride. Um, you know, the, the riding your motorcycle in a Patriot Ride is absolutely um, that's that's such a noble cause. So thank you for doing that. Uh, just a quick little plug while we're here. Uh, the Minnesota chapter of the Folds of Honor, which is an organization, the organization that I feel very, very, very committed to. Um, that's a great organization up in Minnesota. So look them up. But let's get back to this goal weight versus current weight gap. And, and you know, and, and this is something you're going to have to adjust on your own. Everyone's going to have to make that decision for themselves. For me, I, I'm no longer focused on a number. You know, you heard me answer the question just before yours is why I kind of tied these together. Um, is there's a couple things you want to be mindful of. You might want to be mindful of where you look and how you feel and, and how, how the, how the, how your energy level is, how you look, how you feel. And so if you get on the scale and you say, you know, before you hop on, you say, I don't want to lose any more weight. That is your goal weight. Now, the, the, the only reason your question comes up is because we're talking about the difference of paying for a meeting or not paying for a meeting. If that is your only reason, then that's a different strategy than, than the fact that you're trying to, um, trying to get to a point where you can stop paying, but you still want to lose weight. I do think you want to keep it within a nice tight window. I do think you want to keep the numbers really close together. And I think you want to find a number that works for you. I think you want to set them, you know, in that two pound range. And the only reason I say that is because the more you have the ability to fluctuate between a range, if you set it too high and then you want to continue losing, well, then, then you're not, you, you know, you never set it at goal. If you set it too low and then you, and then, you know, one meal sets you over and then you lose your focus, you know, you know, it's, it's going to be one of those scenarios. You've got to have to play with it and see what your mind allows you to do. So I'm perfectly content with a look and a feel at this point. Uh, I've locked into a medium t-shirt. Uh, I've locked into 31 inch jeans. When those don't fit properly, then that's not goal for me anymore. Uh, that, you know, that it doesn't matter what the scale says because you know my scale's creeping up because of my added muscle tone. So, um, you know, I, I, I just want to, I want to really, really dig in on this topic. Because what I want you to feel is the feeling of a goal weight. Not the number of a goal weight. The number is largely irrelevant. You know, the only people at this point tracking the number is, is whether or not, again, whether or not you're a lifetime member and you've got to hit that milestone to pay. But if you set your goal weight properly, if you get to the point where you say, I never want to lose any more weight, you're going to be well within that range that Weight Watchers sets for you. And you're going to be just fine, but set a personal number and own it and maintain it and live a healthy lifestyle that allows you to stay there. Hope that, hope that helps. It's kind of the, uh, it's, it's just so difficult to answer because it's going to be different for everybody based on how your mindset is. Natalie out of Florida writes in, uh, hitting my 10% for the last time. Hi, Mike. After 16 weeks of not missing a meeting, I've earned my 10% charm. Listening to your podcast, I finally understand how valuable this award is. I could go on about all the aha moments I've had listening to your show, but if I had to restate one thing you tell us every day, it would be to find your why. To be honest, when I joined Weight Watchers three years ago, I didn't really embrace the reasons I had to lose weight. All I had was long-term goals, and they did not stand a chance against life circumstances. 
good or bad. I always put the program last. I've been way up and down on the scale all along, months at a time following the program and others not. I've come very, very, very close to quitting the program altogether. This past time when I chose not to quit, it finally hit me. I do want this and I know why. So once again, I refuse to give up on myself. I reset my account to discover I was 21 pounds above where I was when I started three years ago. This 10% takes me back to that number on the scale, but I'm not back at square one because I'm on my longest streak of tracking ever. I'm writing down my whys. I'm keeping track of my progress through photos, through non-scale victories. I finally understand that self-compassion, not self-bullying, is how I'll make it. This is the most fundamental change. I, I did not think I deserved the joy of reaching my goals. I kept punishing myself for lack of perfection on the plan. Now I'm not looking for perfection. I'm doing my best and I'm staying focused. Thank you for believing me. It helped me believe in myself. Well, Natalie, that's a, that's a fantastic email, right? As I read that, you know, I, I can hear in many different episodes that we've talked about, Alessa. So you're clearly taking notes. You're clearly paying attention. You're clearly in the right mindset. And that's how you got your 10%. Now, what do we say about 10%? You know now how valuable that award is. When you hit your 10%, we don't give you a new program. When you hit your 10%, we celebrate with you when you say, you know, you have the tools to do this. You have proven you can do this. It's just a matter of time till you reach your goal. So that's what that 10% means. And you're right, it is absolutely valuable because, because you worked hard to get it. There isn't a single person that hits their 10% on accident. You don't stumble in to a 10-pound weight loss. You've found your why. You've dug deep. And, you know, I got to tell you, the thing about when, you know, I hear all people talk about their why when you truly find your why, the thing, the program just starts to click. So if you listen to the episode again, yes, I'm going to kind of reference back to that one. If you listen to episode uh, 54 from yesterday, you know, I dug deep and told you about my why. I could have very easily kept it very on the surface, and I could have said my why is I want to pass a PT test, right? But that doesn't attack the emotion and the emotional response that hitting my goal weight invokes. So when, when you dig into your why, it's got to be more than a word. You know, it's got to be more than a sentence. It really needs to be a story. It really needs to be something that you've been living with for so long that you want to get rid of. That will keep you going. You know, you're a track star. You're, you're, you have a, you're on a very long tracking streak. The reason you're on a tracking streak is because every morning you wake up with your why in focus. You wake up and you say, why do I want to do this? And, and do I want to do, uh, do I want to stay on plan? Do I want to keep this streak alive? I do. And then so as you make that decision based on your why, everything you do throughout the course of the day, whether you understand it truly or not, is bounced up against your why. So if you have the opportunity to go out and overindulge, whether you're conscious about it or not, if you start the day properly focused, later in the day when that decision comes, you make the right decision based on what you want because your why is carrying you forward. So your email sums the entire program up perfectly. You know, it really, you know, as I read it, um, it really got to me from a sense where I'm like, yeah, this, she gets it. Absolutely gets it. And so, so what I know is that you are going to hit your goal weight. The numbers don't matter. The timeline doesn't matter. You've found what it takes to get it done. And that's what we're all striving for. You know, I tell people all the time, and I don't honestly know how many people truly take me up on the offer. I tell people all the time, write down your why. Because there's something about writing it down. When you sit down and grab a pen, legitimately grab a pen, and you grab a paper and you put this to pen and paper... You're going to elaborate a little more than I want to look good for my cousin's wedding. You know, you're going to dig a little deeper into that thought because you have a whole sheet of paper. It's a blank, blank canvas to write it. So that is 
That is the finding your why piece you've got to do. And, and Natalie, you've done that. That's why you've gotten your 10%. That's why you're track star. That's why you're tracking the longest streak ever. And that's why you're going to make goal. Congratulations uh, early. Let me know when you get there. Colleen writes in, says, uh, hi, Mike, I did it. I ran 10 miles, 10 miles. I can't believe I did it. The Broad Street Run in Philly is a highly coveted race. 100,000 people apply to get in, but only about 40,000 or so are selected by lottery. The things I learned after this race, I am stronger than I thought I was. I had never done this race before. I had never run a this distance ever. But through some training, my longest distance until Sunday had been 7.25 miles. And some advice from friends, I got through it. Mentally, it was very difficult. I had a friend who ran with me for the first four miles. At seven miles, my phones and my earbud died. At eight miles, I realized I was at my longest distance ever, and there would be no one waiting for me at the finish line. I came alone, and I didn't invite anyone to come with me. But I pushed through, and I realized I only needed myself. I cried when I crossed the finish line. It was overwhelming. After I got a shower, a meal or two, and a two-hour nap, I said to myself, what's another 3.1? So I'm looking at a half marathon in the fall. Man, Colleen, way to go. Man, that is an impressive feat. 10 miles is, again, that's the, that's one of those milestones. You know, I loved when you said that when you hit eight, eight miles, you're running and you realize that this is the longest distance you've ever run. Wow, that's incredible. You know, and, and, and when you get to the finish line and there's no one there waiting for you, but you knew you've done this, that is what we need to focus on. You need to be your biggest cheerleader. It's why I ask you to send in these emails. It's why I ask you to tell me about this because you need to be proud of yourself for what you've done. No matter who's at the finish line and who's not at the finish line, you're at the finish line and you can congratulate yourself. And if you can congratulate yourself, then your mind is so powerful. Your mind is so strong and you can get anything done. Now, it's great to get accolades from everybody else. It absolutely feels good, but it feels good in the moment. You know, and when someone congratulates you, you know, if, if you aren't proud of yourself, you kind of dismiss it. But when you crossed your finish line, when you ran those 10 miles and you, and you said, I did this, it didn't matter who was waiting for you because you were there. Your whole new life was waiting for you at that finish line. You went and got it. So you're absolutely right. 13.1 is not much different than 10. If you can do 10, you can do 13, right? So go get a half marathon, get it done. Uh, and, and not only are you your biggest cheerleader, uh, I'm going to cheer you on as well. It's not empty. It's not hollow. Uh, I'm second place to you as far as your cheerleader. You're doing fantastic work. 13.1. Let's get it done. Good work. Ingrid, Ingrid out of Jacksonville writes in and says, uh, I just wanted to let you know how excited I was when I found you on connect on the Weight Watcher app. My leaders and members did not even know anything about you. You're really inspiring to me, and I love listening to your podcast daily. Since I found you, I'm trying to catch up on all of them. I recently joined Weight Watchers. I don't know how many times. Maybe this is my fourth time, or it could be my fifth. But I feel like this is going to be the final time with your support and the fantastic new app and the Connect aspect. I started 320-2017. March 20th. Uh, and this Monday I was down 23 pounds. I was so psyched, which made me a total of 88.4 pounds down as I started on my own before I joined Weight Watchers. But then I felt I needed more motivation to really get over that hump as I still have plenty of weight to lose. Thanks for being there for me daily. I love your podcast and look forward to your new app coming out soon. I am so motivated and I'm going to going on a 12 day vacation tomorrow and planning on losing weight while I'm gone. That is my goal, even if it's just one pound. Thanks for all you do for everyone out there. Uh, Ingrid, Connect rocks. You know, absolutely. We, we all agree that Connect is a game changer. Uh, so I'm glad you're tapped into that community. That was, a, that was one of the things that saved me in my journey, uh, is, is having a community of support, who people who believed in me, people who showed me the way, people that told me that this was possible. 
So you're absolutely right, Connect Rocks, in that regard. You're down 23, point, uh, 23 pounds on Weight Watchers and 80, 88.4 pounds on your own. You are focused. You know what you want. You clearly know why you want it. You're getting it done. And, and the tools that you found along the way are, are invaluable. You know, so I, I completely agree that having some sort of daily accountability, a daily mindset adjustment is absolutely key. And, and at, at this point, the Android app is released. Uh, I got an email today, as a matter of fact, saying the Apple app has, has is in now finally in the queue for review. So I suspect uh, over Memorial Day weekend, if not really soon after, the Wise Advice app for the iOS for Apple will be released. That gives you the ability just to simply pull that up and get a daily dose of motivation. Uh, and I'm glad you found it. I'm glad, or I'm glad you're looking forward to it. Uh, I, I believe it's going to be a game changer as well. Uh, but regardless of all that, is it doesn't matter how many tools are available to you if your mind is not in a place to go grab them. If your mind is not in a place where you're going to go use the tools that are provided, then it doesn't matter what tools we provide. So if you focus on on how you want to lose your weight, and, and you're focused on a why that is a little shallow and it and it doesn't have it doesn't fully encompass why and it doesn't fully encompass your journey, then then you go through this time where you you quit and you jo- join again and you quit and you join again. You know, and I know you say this feels different because now you're, you're tapped into the mindset differently. You're tapped into the tools differently. But the first three, four, five times we join, if you notice, you, in order to rejoin, it's because that the why that you joined the first time never went away. So, so when you join on the first time, you, you join with a why that the why drives you into that meeting room. The why drives you to sign up. And then so you you start the program, and if you don't understand it fully, then you're able to quit. Even if you get complacent, you're able to quit and kind of give up on the program. But but what happens is your why resurfaces. And when your why resurfaces and it finally bubbles back to the top, you join a second time. You work the program. You lose a little bit of focus. Maybe you become complacent, and you stop going. And you stop going for a little bit, and exactly the same thing happens. That why starts bubbling. The why bubbles all the way back up to the top, and you rejoin. So here's what I say about that, and it's critical to know, is if you're on the program and you're struggling, which it doesn't sound like you are, but if you're on the program and you're struggling, and you're thinking of giving up, if you're thinking of quitting, if, if you think you're you're at a point where you can manage this on your own, You've got to know that if you give up, all quitting gives you is a new start date. Because if you don't solve the why, it will always rise itself back to the top and you will always come back to this. So I don't ever want you to give up. What I want you to do is do your best. Some days your best is going to be so super strong. Some days it's not. But if you stay engaged in the process, if you stay committed to yourself and you stay focused and you use the tools that are available and you set up a measure and accountability team to keep reminding you that the tools are available, that, that you want to stay focused, and then you know your why, you've written down your why and you read your why often, that's how you get 88.4 pounds down. That's how you reach your goal. That's how you live happy and healthy for the rest of your life. So thank you so much for your email. Uh, man, it's a great, great topic to discuss. And uh, lastly, before I let you go, is we got Memorial Day weekend coming up. It's a big weekend. Uh, you know, it's lots of festivities, lots of stuff going on. I kind of want to hit that real quick. Uh, again, the bulk of the downloads for the show seem to happen within a day or two of the released uh, the release date. So, so here, here's my uh, Memorial Day strategy. And what I want you to do, I want you to approach this every other way. You know. We, we, it's the same conversation we have over Thanksgiving. It's the same conversation we have over Halloween. It's the same conversation we have over Christmas and Hanukkah. Uh, these are all holidays that pop up. If you understand why you're doing this, then those are just regular days in the calendar. You know, they're just, it's just the opportunity 
To overeat will always be there. It doesn't even need to be a holiday. You have weddings, you have graduations, you have birthdays. You can make an excuse for every day of the week if you're not focused. If you understand where your focus is, if you understand what your why is, then the holiday becomes another day and you'll realize that there's much more to this holiday than food. It's Memorial Day. This particular holiday is Memorial Day. It's the day where we get to pay a, pay a tribute to those who've sworn to defend the Constitution of the United States and they gave their life to do so. Nothing in there says we need to go celebrate with food. So you keep the holiday in, in mind and you, and you celebrate with your family and you, and you pay tribute and you say, you know, I just, I just want to be in the mindset. I want to be in the moment. I want to enjoy the day with friends and family. It doesn't mean you need to overeat. It's the same thing with every other holiday. Enjoy the experience. Enjoy the moment that was provided. Enjoy the break from work. And focus on the relationships, focus on the people, focus on being mindful to what's going on. And then you, you get through the holiday and you're on, the, you're still on track. You're still on plan. You, you go back to your meeting, you hop back on your scale, you own whatever the data is and you continue working the plan. But it's not an excuse to just, to just give up on the holiday because the holiday's here. You know, so, so stay mindful to the process, stay focused. Uh, you have the ability to get there. So happy Memorial Day to you all. Thank you so much for those who've given their life and the families who've sacrificed. Uh, I will give a shout out to them uh, for paying the ultimate sacrifice. And so thank you for that. So here we are What uh, coming up in the end. What are you celebrating? You know, let's share it on the air. You know, I always ask you that. Go to fatdag.com. Click on listen now. Send in your celebrations. I really want to hear your celebrations. I want to hear your whys. I want to hear your comments, your questions. I'll work them in as part of the show. Go ahead and email me on air at fatdag.com. But that's going to do it for this time. Remember, losing weight, getting healthy has nothing to do with luck. You have to remain disciplined and focused. Set your sights on your goal and go after it. I wish you good focus. <laughs>